So you were that. saying that you you asked me if I'd seen the movie Man from the River. Yeah. And I have um, one hundred and eighty million times. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was a kid, watched it every day. Oh Loved my. that thing. And uh, anyway. <laughs> Years later, I heard some guy telling a little story about the Men from Snow River, and I'm like, oh my god, how could they really just capture the essence of that movie in verse? They just really nailed it. I'm like, I gotta learn more about this. So I went <laughs> home and I looked it up, written by a man named Banjo, A.B. Patterson, Banjo's a pen name, uh, in like 1893. <laughs> yeah. Well, before yeah. the movie ever came out. <laughs> so, uh, Banjo is one of Australia's most famous poets. He also penned Waltzing Matilda, which is the mm -hmm. pseudo yeah. anthem for Australia. Australia. And he wrote a million amazing poems. And if you ever just want to get lost in a sea of horse races, bar fights, and a good time, <laughs> <laughs> pick up A.B. Banjo Patterson's collected verse. And it is incredible i mean one line after another and some of them are like they're really long stanza poems you know where the rhyme just goes on and on and on but he wrote clancy of the overflow and just all these great poems anyway um one of the most famous of course is the man from the river so being a lover of that show and the whole history i had to had to learn that and hadn't told it in quite a while choked on it Pretty bad a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see. They're always in there somewhere. It's just a matter of, you know, yeah. getting them out. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, we got nowhere to go, so we'll all wait. Right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, there was movement at the station, for the word had passed around that the colt from Old Regret got away. And he joined the wild bush horses, worth, which were worth a thousand pounds, and all the cracks had joined the wild prey. Excuse me. I twisted the line up. There was movement at the station, for the word had passed around that the colt from old regret had got away, and joined the wild bush horses. He was worth a thousand pounds, so all the cracks had gathered to the prey. All the tried and noted riders from stations near and far had mustered at the homestead overnight, where the bushmen loved hard riding where the wild bush horses are, and the stock horse snuffs the battle with delight. There was Harrison, who made his pile when Pardon won the cup, the old man, his hair as white as snow. Yet few could ride beside him when his blood was fairly up. He could go wherever horse and man could go. And Clancy of the overflow came down to lend a hand. A better rider never held the reins. For never a horse could throw him when the saddle grip would stand. He learned to ride while groping on the plains. And one was there, a stripling on a small and weedy beast, who looked just like a racehorse, undersized. A touch of timber pony, three parts thoroughbred at least, as such are by mountain horsemen prized. He was hard and tough and wiry, just the kind that won't say die. There was courage in his quick and patient tread, and he bore the badge of gameness in his breath. <clears throat> and he bore the badge of gameness in his bright and fiery eyes, and the proud and lofty carriage of his head. Yet still so slight and weedy, one might doubt his power to stay. The old man said, "That horse will never do, for a long and tiring gallop, lad. You'd better stay away. These hills are far too rough for such as you." So he waited sad and wistful only clancy stood his friend i think that we should let him come he said for i warrant he'll be with us when he's needed at the end for both his horse and he are mountain bred he hails from snowy river up by kavishkov side for the hills are twice as steep and twice as rough and the horse's hoof strikes firelight from the flintstone every stride and the man who holds his own is good enough and the snowy river riders on the mountain make their home where the river runs those big hills in between I've seen fair many riders since I've commenced to roam, but never yet such riders have I seen. So they went. They found the horses by a big mimosa clump. They raced away towards the mountain's brow, and the old man gave his orders. Boys, go at them from the jump. No use to try for fancy riding now. In Clancy, you must wheel them. Try and wheel them to the right. Ride boldly, lad, and never fear the spill. For there never was a rider who could hold the mob in sight if once they gained the shelter of those hills. So Clancy rode to wheel them. He raced along the wing where the best and boldest riders take their place. He raced his stock horse past them and he made the rangers ring with a stock whip as he met them face to face. Well, they halted for a moment while he swung that dreaded lash, but they could see their well-loved mountain full in view. 
and they charged beneath the stock whip with a quick and sudden dash, and off into the mountain scrub they flew. Then fast the horsemen followed, with gorges deep and black, resounded with the thunder of their tread, and the stock whips woke the echoes, and they fiercely answered back, from cliffs and crags their feet overhead. Upward, ever upward, the wild horses held their way, for the mountain ash and cure jaw grew wide, and the old man muttered fiercely, We can bid them off good day, for no man can hold them down the other side. When they reached the mountain summit, even Clancy took a pull. It well might make the boldest hold their breath. For the wild hop scrub grows thickly, and the hidden ground is full of wombat holes, and any slip was death. But the man from Snowy River, he let his pony have his head. He swung his stock whip round and gave a cheer, and he raced him down the mountain like a torrent down his bed, while the other stood and watched in silent fear. Well, they sent the Flintstone flying, but the pony held his feet. They were clearing fallen timber in his stride, and the man from Snowy River never shifted in his seat. It was grand to see that mountain horseman ride. Through the string barks from the sapling over rough and rugged ground, down the hillside at a racing pace they went, and he never drew his bridle till they landed safe and sound at the bottom of that terrible descent. Mm -hmm. He was riding among the horses as he climbed the further hill. The watchers on the hillside, standing mute, mm -hmm. saw him ply his stock whip fiercely. He was riding among them still as he raced across the clearing in pursuit. While he ran them single-handed well, till their sides were white with foam, he followed like a bloodhound on their track, till they halted, cowed and beaten. Then he turned their heads for home, and alone and unassisted drove them back. And over by Kosciuszko, where the reed beds sweep and sway, over, <clears throat> over by Kosciuszko, where the white stars fairly blade at midnight in the clear and frosty sky, and over by the overflow where the reed beds sweep and sway, and the breeze and the range is open wide, the man from Snowy River is still a household word today, and the stockmen tell the story of his ride. <laughs> 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 <laughs>